Fantastic. Welcome to Pi, uh, Pi Around the World. Um, our uh, presenter is uh, Pau Crestillo. Um, Pau works as the Director of Education for Ecuador um, with MathKind Global. Um, she is a graduate of Pure Mathematics and has a master's degree in education. She is the mother of two little ones and a full-time wife. She is a lover of education and faithfully believes that this is the key to lasting change. So without further ado, I present to you um, Paola Castillo. Hola, hola, bienvenidos todos. Gracias. Hello and welcome to everybody. Thank you for coming today. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen so that everybody can confirm if you can see it or not. Como vamos? Can you see it? Before I begin, I wanted to remind you that this is a bilingual session. All of my slides are actually both in English and Spanish. But because I am from Ecuador, I have selected to go ahead and do my presentation in Spanish today. Welcome to everybody. I know that most of you already introduced yourself with Cali. And I saw that we have people from Guatemala, Ecuador, Costa Rica, and a couple of friendly faces from past events. And I also see some new faces. Welcome to everybody. And we are going to start today by celebrating Pi Day. And that's why today's session, we're going to focus on Pi. Before I start, however, I do want to ask everybody to please make sure that you have your materials ready. So those that were able to go into part the participate platform, and we asked you to have a couple of different things for this session. If you have not grabbed these things yet, please take 30 seconds to go grab them. Paper, pencil, and a ruler. If you have some type of yarn or string, something similar to this, perhaps. We don't want it to be too stretchy or flexible because then that might cause some difficulty with measurement, but please go ahead and find some type of some yarn, maybe a shoe, uh, a shoe, a shoe string would work. We might not get to use the matches, but uh, go ahead and have them handy so you can experiment later. In this session, I'm going to give you a little snapshot of something that you can do to deepen with Pi. For those of you that love Pi, there's a lot of things that you could do and how you can deepen. So hopefully today I can just spark a little bit of your interest, give you a couple of new ideas for some of you. And the matches is going to be for you to be able to do an activity later on. So it's great to have them handy. Okay. How are we doing? Are we doing okay? You have the materials. I saw some of you showing me the yarn. So basically, pen, paper, something to write with, and this yarn. We are hoping that this session can be as interactive as possible. In Spanish, the word conference is actually one of the words I don't like at all, because it implies that we're talking and everybody else is listening. So I'm hoping for this to not be like that. Like Kylie said, you can just raise your hand so that I can see that you want to say something, that we can go ahead and have a dialogue. And you, if you are in a place where you can't actually speak out loud for whatever reason, then just go ahead and make some comments in the chat. I just want you to be able to participate in an active manner. Oh, I just realized that I didn't put the audio on. Give me one second so that I can make sure that the audio is connected. Great. Okay, what's today's agenda? We are going to do a quick icebreaker. 
Oh, by the way, can I ask you for a favor? If you could go ahead and put your name and your country in the chat. I know you already did it, but many new people have joined us. So please put your name, your country, and if you needed to pick one word to represent your country, what word would that be? So name, country, and a word to describe it in the chat, please. Thank you. We're also going to be doing a cultural activity, which is why I'm asking for you to do this. We're going to do an activity about same and different. Then we're going to do a scavenger hunt activity similar to what Kelly did at the beginning, explaining how we want to see and discover math everywhere. Oh, actually, can you give me a thumbs up or a like if you've already participated in the scavenger hunt that we started last week? So if you've already been able to do the scavenger hunt, give me a thumbs up or a like. Okay, I see a couple of thumbs up. Great. So we're going to also watch a short video about the history of Pi. And then we're going to look at Pi in the world, where we can see Pi in other places as well. Okay, great. Have you ever played the game that's Three truths and a lie. It's actually two two truths and a lie usually, but uh, I don't know if you're familiar with this or not. But we're gonna do a little bit of trivia right now. So because Mathkind has staff members in the U.S., Ecuador, and Guatemala, I have selected three images of each one of these places. So hopefully you won't make a mistake in terms of your own country. But how is the game going to be carried out? So I have a question. I'm going to start with Guatemala, but everybody participates, okay? In the description of this workshop, in the description of this workshop, I don't know if you noticed, but we were asking, how is the Tocoyal similar to the Ecuadorian line and to a pie? A pumpkin pie. Oh, how do you say pumpkin in Spanish? <laughs> Calabaza. Sorry, a pumpkin pie, yes. So, in order to start, we all want to be clear as to what is a tocoyal, what is the Ecuadorian line, and what is a pumpkin pie. So, select which one of these four statements is incorrect. So, a tocoyal is an embroidered ribbon that you put around your head or that the woman puts around their head to look like a hat. So that's option number one. No, 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 don't answer yet. Let's not spoil it for the rest of folks, okay? So just think about it, but don't put it yet. Your answer. Number two, the tokoyal can be about 6.6 .6 feet long. And number three, this tokoyal you can see in this 25 cent coin in our country of Guatemala. And number four, the Tokoya symbolizes the Mayan calendar and the continuity of life. Okay. So I put the question in here, the, the poll, so please answer it. The Tokoya is an embroidered ribbon bad, number one. You put around the woman's head to, submit, to look like a hat. Number two, it can measure 6.6 .6 feet. Number three, it, it, you can see it in the national coin of 25 cents. And number four, it symbolizes the Mayan calendar and the continuity of life. Mm, esa votación está cambiando. I see some people are voting, so go ahead and vote. Maybe give me a thumbs up after you have voted. When I did this activity, I actually had no idea what a tokoyal was. So I selected a tokoyal because I asked people from Guatemala, hey, maybe tell me something that's really symbolic that people may not know about. And they shared with me the image of the tokoyal. Are you already? Thumbs up if you're already. I think most of you already did it, right? Okay. 
There we go. There we go. El 43% de las personas que... 43% of people think that the collao se enrolla circularmente en la cabeza. Es something that you put around your head of the women to simulate a hat. Oh, remember, it was three truths and a lie. So you had to select the lie. Oh, so this is an image of the tocoyal. This part of what she's wearing on her head is the tocoyal. Who is in Guatemala? Can somebody from Guatemala raise their hand and talk to us about what the tocoyal is? Nobody from Guatemala? Hello, hi Carla, yes. I had not introduced myself because I had a difficult time joining the call. What I know of the Tocoyal. It's something very customary of Guatemala. And this is from an area called Sololá. Yes, that's correct. From Laguna. Pues no solo ese tipo de topoyal existen. And there's not only that type of topoyal. There's also another topoyal that has different a ribbon, different color ribbons. We don't use it so much anymore. But our grandmothers and some of our mothers would do some braids and then put this ribbon around their head, and that's another tradition as well. Thank you. So it is a type of hat, right? A headdress. This one in the photograph is from Santiago. And the women would basically put a different ribbon around their head, and that's how they would use it. So basically, number one would be the true statement. It does actually symbolize uh, the Mayan calendar as well, and the continuity of life, and it's also represented in... Lo que no es, es que no es, de, no puede medir hasta dos metros de la cabeza. which is 25 cents. But it can actually measure different amounts, so it's not just 6.6. If you have a piece of yarn, if you could measure maybe a meter long, you take about two meters and a head. Let me know. And if it, I have two meters right here, I'm going to put it around my head. Yeah. So that's more or less what I was able to do. Do you think that two meter is going to be enough to do something like this? No. Actually, the interesting thing about the tocoyal is that you can make a tocoyal with different kinds of ribbon, about 16 and 21 meters of our space to 60 feet. So that's a lot, a lot more than two meters maybe 10 times longer. Okay, now that we're warming up, let's do it again. And this is the next one. I hope the people from Guatemala, I'm seeing that you're just joining over here. Hopefully you have seen the Tocoyal and you saw yourself identified there, but maybe depending on your region, you've never seen it before. Okay, the Equatorian line that goes through Ecuador at latitude zero is the largest circumference of the earth. It has the point that is closest to the sun. Number three, it divides the country of Ecuador into equal parts. And number four, it crosses 13 countries around the world. Abierta la trivia. Okay, the trivia is open. Please go ahead and respond. Is it true that it's a circumference? Is it the biggest one? Is it true that it contains the closest point of the earth to the sun? 
Is it true that it divides Ecuador into equal parts and goes through 13 other countries of the world? What do Ecuadorians think, my counterparts? I see people from Santa Elena. I saw them introduce themselves in the chat. I see that some of you are there. I have 12 answers. Here are your answers. Here you can see the results of your own voting. The Ecuadorian line could be the largest one. What happened if the Earth was a sphere? How many circumferences? Uh, bigger than that, what we have? Only one? If, we ha if it was a circumference, it would be infinite. So why isn't that the case? And it is the largest one on Earth. Who can tell me why? All right, the Earth is not an sphere. It's on the poles, is lower, so it would be very, very wide, and that's why it's the biggest circumferences. And that's why it goes through latitude zero, because it is flattened at the poles. It does contain the points because it is flattened at the poles. The Equatorial line is close is the closest point from the Earth to the Sun. Not even the Everest is closest to the Sun, like El Chimborazo in the mountains here at Ecuador, precisely because Everest is the highest in respect to, to the sea level, but not from the Sun or for and but it does not divide Ecuador in two parts. The Ecuadorian line is very far north at the north of Quito. Quito is my point of reference, so it does not divide into equal parts. It divides the globe into equal parts. And if you observe, since it's a circumference, it goes through different countries, but Ecuador is privileged by their name. How did we do? I hope most Ecuadorians knew the answer. This image that we have here is my colleague Fatima in a monument to La Mitad del Mundo. This is the real one. This is not photographs. And my colleague Fatima is at the north and I am in Ecuador. I am further south. We are stepping on each one of our sides. So now it's the turn for the United States states. The pumpkin pie, the largest pumpkin pie was six meters long in diameter Two, It's a very common dessert of the United States. Three, you eat it on Thanksgiving from the origin of this holiday. Uh, four, the same as other pies, they are the symbol of pie or the P day or the pie day because of its geometry and name. I'm going to put this voting is open. The pumpkin pie. Seven of you have voted. Eight. We still have some more. How did we do? Ready? Okay. Veo que ya hemos 
Okay. I see that we have reached a large number of answers. Good. I saw that you were indecisive between number one and number three. I would like to hear someone from the United States that can tell us a little bit about the pumpkin pie. You know what? I have never tried it. I am trying to taste to try it. Can someone who's super sure what, what the answer is and why? Who can go? I see Susie. Susie, could you share a little bit about the pumpkin pie? I saw that you were from the United States. And unmute. Hi. Um, well, pumpkin pie is we we eat it at Thanksgiving usually, and um, it is made of pumpkin, but it doesn't really taste like pumpkin because it has a lot of spices in it. It's sweet, cinnamon, and that kind of thing. And um, I'm not sure what the answer was. Um, I can't remember what the choices were now, but I didn't think that. I, I thought they could have made one as big as the first choice. So I picked number four. So I'm not sure. <laughs> Is that enough? Does that help? Mm -hmm. And we buy our canned pumpkin at the grocery store. I don't think anybody actually gets it from a pumpkin except for really people who really work hard. <laughs> okay. Gracias. O sea, evidentemente es un postre popular. Eso es Thank you. So what we know from Susie is a very popular dessert. Susie does not know. If you can build it as big, it could be possible. Perhaps we could Google it because apparently that is the world Guinness record on a pumpkin pie. And the truth, the last one was precisely in 2010 in Ohio. So it was two meter long or 6.6. .6. You could see the photograph. You could Google it. Uh, it, it actually weighed something like 4,000 pounds. But I'm going to tell you what's not true is that the pie did not start in from the beginning of the pilgrimage. So not even later when they decided that it was going to be November 4th, it was much later of a long story of controversies of do we do pumpkin pie this pumpkin was an element of the daily diet but there wasn't uh, an agreement on the decision but now anyone uh, in the US uh, knows that pumpkin pie is in every Thanksgiving table it didn't used to be like that um, I can see in your messages there if you agree or not that it definitely represents the Thanksgiving dinner in the United States. Perfect. There is an image and we do celebrate pi and the number P is the same. Or the, and that is why we celebrated eating a pie. <laughs> pumpkin pie really any pie okay what are the difference and what are the similarities from these three images we know what a tokoyal is we talked about the equatorial line and what are what and we i want to know what is the difference i can relate it with like we talked about the equatorial line and the circumference, the culture of each country, right? They represent the culture from each country and the geometry. What is different? They are circumferences. People, someone is saying they're all, the hat, the Ecuadorian, the pie. And what what is the difference between them? Or what is different between them? Alguna diferencia? 
Any difference? In a similar session, they spoke about the geographic uh, area. The pie is food and the others is not edible, says Fatima. That's true, that's right. One of the things that unites them is that they all have P. I'm going to ask you to take 30 seconds to look around you and find circular objects. What do you see around you, where you are that is circular? When you have found one or several objects, I'm going to pronounce in the chat. I see a globe. Someone is, they're sharing and showing circular things. Someone is showing a coin, a lid. Someone, Soraya has a globe, world globe. I see a plate, Fatima has a plate. I watch a bracelet. Okay, many things. Perfect. Now, I asked you to have a piece of paper at hand. So what I'm going to try to do, I'm going to see if I can. I'm going to ask you to draw, to use the object to draw a circumference in a piece of paper. I'm going to try to do it as well. Okay, ya lo hicieron. Okay, do you have it? And when you do it, I'm going to do it in a different camera. You see two Paola Castillo. Mine is a tape. I don't know if you can see it. I'm going to do a circumference. Algo similar a esto. Something similar to that. Do you see here? And now you will use the this little rope to measure your object. In Spanish, in Spanish, we circle. We call all the inner part that is similar to the radio. And this is called contour in Spanish. I have my circumference. And I'm going to do the same thing with the radio. Sorry, with the diameter. So the distance between, between the two poles in the circumference. Can you see? During this session, Margarita was saying, to ensure this is fine, I'm going to recommend that you tell people to cut their circumference and then they bend it. When you bend it in the middle, you have the perfect diameter. You won't go wrong. We would have, you could, you could go wrong unless you do it that way. <clears throat> How are we doing? Do we have our circumference ready, our distance uh, measured with a rope or a string? Uh, I, I did it with a watch on a scavenger hunt in what you get. What are we going to do now? We're going to see this diameter enters in their circumference. First, I'm going to see how many can go in. How many times does this diameter 
enters in this length, which is my circumference. Okay, so let me know how many of these can you put inside the other. So one, two, more or less. Jorge said three and a bit more. How was it? How many times does this diameter fit inside of this circumference? in this contour of my circle. Carlos dice también tres un poquito más. Carlos has three and a bit more. Same as Jorge. Okay. Fatima. Yo voy a hacer este experimento usando una... I will do this experiment utilizing an app that I like a lot. It's called Choyeta. How many of you have used this app? Some people are not yet. Okay, Chio Chibra. Okay, in GeoGebra or GeoGebra. This is an example of a circumference. And now I can measure so we can be more precise. So now take your ruler and to measure how much is your diameter. In my case, my diameter is 10.8. I'm going to show you. Mi distancia pequeñita mide 10.8. No sé si lo ven. 10.8. I don't know if you can see it, more or less. ¿Cuánto mide la tuya? So how much is yours? 10.8 centímetros. 10.8 centímetros. But the interesting thing is it doesn't matter which unit you're utilizing. It, the important thing is to do it with the same one, the same. The, to measure in the same way the radius and the diameter. Some people prefer inches or another measurement. So now we're going to do the same with the long one. 7.3, Jorge says. 10.8 was my case. And the long little rope. Mine said 34. Now I have used a tool, an application that allows me to do this. And here it says that my radius for this tape was 5.4. So the radius, which is half, is 5.4. And uh, I thought it was going to be 34, but it's actually 33.93. And the software did this. So then what did I do? I did something similar. What I did was to turn it around and extend it. The same thing you did. You're turning it around, you extended it. And see, I extended it. And then I can see that mine is 33.93 when my diameter was 10.8 and i divide this value that he obtained with a long piece of yarn with for the diameter in my case it was 33.93 for 10.8 how much would that be you can put it in the chat, you can take the mic. I don't feel like I'm here talking to myself. <laughs> so feel free to take the mic if you like. Okay, Jorge is saying in the chat how much it is. He said it was 3.15. Pato said 3.14. A mi mi división de 34 dividido para cuánto era? 10. Mine 34 divided by 10.8 was 3.15. I see some messages here and there. Okay. Pero todo se salió como 3. Algo, 3. 15, 3. So everybody got 3. Point something, right? 3.15, 3.14. Lucy, you said it was 5.5. The length of the yarn. 
the contours, the diameter, Si quieres, levanta tu micrófono y comparte. You can take the mic and share. Ah, el diámetro, dice. Oh, the diameter. Justamente en tu circunferencia. Okay, es... so your circumference. Lucy, uy, ya se me fue tu, tu valor, 5.5. Oh, you said 5.5. So now divide your contour. So then let's make an observation. You see Lucy's example. She said it was 5.5 for, for diameter. So the radius is going to be half of that. 2.5 is going to be her radius. And this, is, this allows me to play it, play around with it. It's like a little slider and I can move it uh, to the right or to the left to increase or decrease. I am going to do an approximation for Lucy. Lucy, what was your object again? Can you show us what it was? A coin. Lucy said it was a coin. Lucy, it's going to be like this one. It's smaller than mine. And regardless of how small her coin is, when you do this experiment of rolling it and rolling it and measuring that approximately her circumference is going to be 17.59 approximately and when she divides that with her 5.6 and this is an approximation this is going to be 3.14 another example maybe show me your example carla what was your object Un recipiente. It's the lid for this container. ¿Cuál era eh, el, el radio de tu o diámetro? And what was the diameter? 19 centímetros. 19 centímetros. Wow. Uh -huh. That's big. <laughs> I, don't think it, I don't think I have enough space in here. Podría oh, reprogramarlo, yeah. sí. Pero I no. could reprogram it. No lo tomé algo tan grande. I didn't take it into consideration. Somebody have something a little bit smaller? You said, Yo, perdón, oh, perdón. you have enough. Oh, my bad. Yes, 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 yes. yes. Sorry, I just said radius. Okay, so half of that, 9.5. It's a huge lid. Hold on, let me, let me set this up. Okay, let's make it a little smaller. Okay, this is Carla's lid. I'm going to do the same. Carla, we we'll ask you to extend your circumference and see what happens. Lo extendió. ¿Y cuánto dijiste tú que encontraste tú aproximadamente en, en tu medición? And Carla, how much did you find with your measurement? 3.579. Y el contour? And the contour? 19 centimeters. El diámetro 19 centímetros. The el diameter was 19 centímetros. And that's the circumference. Centímetros. Ah, miren, en realidad ella midió aproximadamente 60. Yeah, it was measured 60 and what I got over here was 59.69. Mm -hmm. So what's happening is it doesn't matter how large or small your circumference, I can make it bigger or smaller. See what happens when I make it bigger or smaller. I'm going to put it here so you can see the division. When I stretch it out, this division for the circumference that's going to change according to the size, it's always going to be a constant. And what's that constant? I'm going to do it with a particular case. Where the radius is 0.5, the diameter is 1. So what happens in that case when I stretch it out? Oh, I made it too small. Hold on. There we go. What happens? It's going to be pi. So then we understand pi, like that relationship between how much is the contour of a circumference in respect to its diameter. 
The interesting thing is that I can do this regardless of how small or big that circumference might be. So if you can do this experiment with your students, you're going to realize that this relationship, I mean, there's going to be some minor changes depending how good we were stretching it out and cutting it, but it's going to be that relationship. And actually, I have another, another similar experiment to see what happens here. I'm not going to go into details. I have an actually really nice video to show you in a moment. But what if I take this circumference that's over here and I open it up, and then I decide to break it up into segments? I can divide it into segments. And then I can see what happens if I stretch it out. That's the same way that we do it with the circumference. I can do it with this and show what's the relationship with the area. And if I reorganize this information and I put it like this and I change the different divisions, then I can show what is going to be the area of a circumference. And as many small segments I do it into, the more it's going to be similar to the area of a square, which is going to be R, and a length that's going to be the same as the circumference, because we took the circumference and we opened it up. Okay. Para ver justamente esto que les acabo de decir. So, to, to show you exactly what we've talked about now. Oh. How do we share this video again? Hold on a second. Digamos que ya pueden escuchar. Este es un video súper corto. Lo he dejado en los recursos para que ustedes puedan verlo de nuevo. Y las this is a very short video, and I actually shared it with the resources, so you can play it again as many times as you like. And this is going to be an example with pizzas, because we all love pizza. <laughs> so this is an example that you can utilize in your class with pizza to show the relationship within diameter circumference and see why pi is a constant and to see how to calculate the area of a circumference. This video is about the ridiculous way we used to count. Un segundo. Voy a ponerle subtítulos para que los, las personas... Give me a second. I'm going to go ahead and put subtitles on it. Because it, the video is in English, but you can do these subtitles and play the subtitles in Spanish if you like. calculate pi. For 2,000 years, the most successful method was painstakingly slow and tedious. But then Isaac Newton came along and changed the game. You could say he speed ran pi, and I'm going to show you how he did it. But first, pi with pizzas. Cut the crust off a pizza and lay it across identical pizzas. And you'll find that it goes across three and a bit pizzas. This is pi. The circumference of a circle is roughly 3.14 times its diameter. But pi is also related to a circle's area. Area is just pi r squared. But why is it pi r squared? Well, cut a pizza into really thin slices and then form these slices into a rectangle. Now, the area of this rectangle is just length times width. The length of the rectangle is half the circumference because there's half the crust on one side and half on the other. So the length is pi r. And then the width is just the length of a piece of pizza, which is the radius of the original circle. So area is pi r times r. Area is pi r squared. So the area of a unit circle then is just pi. Keep that in mind because it'll come in handy later. So what was the ridiculous way we used to calculate pi? Well, it's sort of the most obvious way. It's easy to show that pi must be between 3 and 4. Take a circle and draw a hexagon inside it with sides of length 1. A regular hexagon can be divided into six equilateral triangles. So the diameter of the circle is 2. Now the perimeter of the hexagon is 6, 
and the circumference of the circle must be larger than this, so pi must be greater than 6 over 2, so pi is greater than 3. Now draw a square around the circle. The perimeter of the square is 8, which is bigger than the circle's circumference, so pi must be less than 8 over 2, so pi is less than 4. This was actually known for thousands of years, and then in 250 BC, Archimedes improved on the method. So first he starts with the hexagon, just like you did, and then he bisects the hexagon to a dodecagon, so that's a 12-sided, regular 12-sided shape, and he calculates its perimeter, the ratio of that perimeter to the diameter will be less than pi. He does the same thing for a circumscribed 12-gon and finds an upper bound for pi. The calculations now become a lot more tricky because he has to extract square roots and square roots of square roots and, and turn all these into fractions. But uh, he works out the 12-gon and then the 24-gon, 48-gon, uh, and, and by the time he gets to the 96-gon, he's sort of had enough. Uh, but he gets, in the end, he gets pi to between 3.1408 and 3.1429. So for over 2,000 years ago, that's not too bad. Yeah, that seems like all the precision you'd need in pi. Right, so this goes way beyond pr precision for any practical purpose. This is now a, a matter of uh, flexing your muscles. You know, this is, this is uh, showing off just how much mathematical power you have that you can work out a constant like pi to very high precision. So for the next 2,000 years, this is how everyone carried on, bisecting polygons to dizzying heights. As Pi passed through Chinese, Indian, Persian, and Arab mathematicians, each contributed to these bounds along Archimedes' line. And in the late 16th century, Frenchman Francois Viette doubled a dozen more times than Archimedes, computing the perimeter of a polygon with 393,216 sides, only to be outdone at the turn of the 17th century by the Dutch Ludolf van Keulen, he spent 25 years on the effort, computing to high accuracy the perimeter of a polygon with 2 to the 62 sides. That is 4 quintillion, 611 quadrillion, 686 trillion, 18 billion, 427 million, 387,904 sides. What was the reward for all of that hard work? Just 35 correct decimal places of pi. He had these digits inscribed on his tombstone. Twenty years later, his record was surpassed by Christoph Grienberger, who got 38 correct decimal places. But he was the last to do it like this? Pretty much, yeah. Because shortly thereafter, we get Sir Isaac Newton on the scene. And uh, once Newton introduces his method, nobody is bisecting n-gons ever again. Hey, this video is muchísimo más largo ustedes también son como 18 minutos explicando también eh, el this método. video is a lot longer explaining the method that Newton used to change from decimals in pi the important thing is how this appeared in history thousands of years ago more than 2000 and this method that originally was born from Archimedes and that was perfecting through the history uh, with Isaac Newton, it was the opportunity to create these polygonos inscritos and connecting to geometry to work with series. And this wonderful Newton's idea uh, allowed to initiate this decimal calculus. So can you see how these polygonos that have more and more sides on the limit. I think it comes close to the circumference. This was the predecessor of this calculus. So with this method, Archimedes found values very close to pi, or at least enough to do his uh, calculations. And this has awakened an interest throughout history to see how people continue to use pi in different areas, not only where we have a circumference, uh, their connection with series and the knowledge that they bring to probability is very important in mass. What else do you know about pi? 
¿Alguna idea interesante sobre ti que conozcan? Uh, any idea? Anything interesting, interesting facts besides this one? Anything interesting that you know about? In my, ca in my case, they taught me to memorize this value, 3.14. This is the pi to be able to do, to apply geometry formulas. That's it, they, they, they taught us how to use the formula. Anything else, anything new? Algo interesante que les puedo contar es que el símbolo pi, que es el que está aquí. Something else that I can, that could be interesting, is it was introduced in 1706, a lot later of uh, the apparition with Archimedes. Before, it wasn't known as pi, but the constant of Archimedes that lived from 287, to 212 before Christ. And so we ha we are approximately for 300 years with the symbol and calling it pi with this Greek letter that represents the perimeter. That's why that's why we call it pi from this perimeter. This Euler, Leonard Euler, made this term be popular. And from then on, we know it as such. Today, March 14th, we celebrate the day of Pi because in the day in the countries where you first write the the day uh, and then the month, then it would be the third, 14th in places like in the US where you first do the month and then the day. Uh, something interested, interesting is that Albert Einstein was born on that date, March 3rd, 14th, 1879. As I told you, people took years and years trying to find one additional digit, one one more digit to 2022 or 2023. Uh, in 2022, it was when this record was broken. They know a hundred billions of digits. And it has been Google with the technology of Google Cloud. It is one of the methods to know how good a computer is, how how resistant it is uh, because of this idea of being able to count the amount of digits. I was, pi is everywhere. Wherever you see a circum, circumference, there's pi. You said plates, coins, watches, but in history, there have been many, many objects many many moments in which the circumference has been something very very important because of their uh, geometric popular like circular circular crops are not only beautiful from a plane i don't know if you've ever seen a circular crop from a plane they look beautiful they're gigantic constructions but they have a reason they uh, helped to reduce um, in different, depending on the grounds, they, they help with the uh, water. Um, there are also circular houses in history. It didn't matter where they were because they optimized the perimeter. For instance, if I want to do a 20 uh, square meter house, it's much cheaper to do it circularly because what I need in order to to close it is less than I need if I do it as a rectangular or as a square. Now we do a rectangular and a square because of design. But in reality, for optimization, circular is like that. For instance, arenas, domes, temples, clocks, calendars, everything that goes in cycle uses a, circum a circumference. Anywhere or any country in the world, most coins are circular. And talking about coins, I have a math game. It is free for you to download. It's a PDF. I did not create it. It's called Penny Pecker. 
I adapted for Guatemala for quetzals and we use it in Ecuador for cents. You could do it with Fomix. I did it in PDF so you can download it and you can play. It is a math challenge to be able to locate 16 coins. It is a gift. So you could do a math activity using this. <clears throat> Where else is pi? Besides the circumference, we know that where there's a circumference, there's pi. Where else is there pi? It's always in music, also in music. The video is there. I'm going to play it for two seconds. You just saw that you can do music with Pi. It's in, infinite. They chose 115 digits, but you could have this melody going on forever. It does not exist a pattern, but music use patterns. And even then you can create a melody as beautiful as the one you just heard. This is the experiment for those of you who need the Buffon's Needle problem. It is a resource. I will tell you where we're about to finish, but I want you to have resources in order to explore where Pi is. The experiment is very easy, very, very easy. We're not going to do it, but I'm going to share. You take a box of matches, a paper, do parallel lines, depending of uh, where you want to find 2D means two, um, two matches. If I put them uniformly spaced, as you can see in the image, and, and I randomly throw the matches onto the paper, and then I see how they fall. Then I count how many matches cross the line, as you can see here. Do you, you see the three cross the line? The probability for the match to cross this line is one over pi when my distance is 2D. And uh, we can do it. Uh, in virtually, we could do it the other way around. We can ask them to to count how many cross, and we can divide the amount of matches we uh, throw to the amount that they cross. And we can realize when we repeat this one, two, three, four, five times, we can see that this 10 to pi. So pi is also in probability. So I left you a link. This link has an experiment do it with GeoGebra. You can see that I can do this with a lot of needles. You could do it interactively here and you can see this instead of with two times the distance, it does it with one, that's why there's a one, but you can see how there's an experiment here. And I see that if I repeat, the probability increases. We also have the probability and finally, and for closing, did you know that you can find birthday in Pi? How do we do this? I'm going to leave you this in the chat so that you can do it and you can share it as Kali mentioned. You can put the evidence of your work in participate. Let me see where I have this in the chat in link, share in the chat, it's here.
Este link que les acabo de compartir les permite encontrar su... In this link that I have shared allows you to find your birthday in Thai. For example, my birthday is March 2nd, 1988. And this allows me to search where my birthday is located in Pai and how is that possible? Well, because it's a number that has infinite decimals, you can find the pattern. And that's why it's like a get instructed to see who knows the next digit. Because we believe that all the combinations are possible. We can't show it because we don't know how many numbers there are, but we can see that all birthdays, all the combinations of six digits, it's possible to find it. So regardless of your birthday, you'll be able to find it. My birthday is found in, oh, wait, 882,122 of pi. So I invite you to copy this information. I know we're out of time. Just give me two, two minutes and I'll show you exactly where to find this. So if you go to the class, Oh, I think I'm in the wrong place. So if you go to the class that uh, we showed you at the beginning and you go to this section, and the session that's almost finishing, we hear you have the materials needed. We have all of the resources that I used for this class right, right here. The history, the 12 penny game, the video, if you want to finish listening to it. And I'm asking that if you can say, add your work and then tell us what was the object that you used for this session? What was the circumference in whatever measurements you want? Like mine was 34 centimeters. And here you're going to put the diameter. And mine was a little piece of yarn that you put save and close. And then here we also want you to add your birthday. Like mine, my first day is in the digit 882,122 of pi. Save, accept, and that way we can count your attendance for today's session. So continue to celebrate pi during this next session and to continue to find where math is at around the world, around your environment. And now we're going to have some other facilitators talking about the history in real life. So we can continue today's session. Thank you.